so I guess to start, like, did people do the labs? And if so, which version? Because <laughs> I went through um, parts of the the Torch version. I didn't even look at the Keras version. Anyone else? <laughs> Um, I didn't try the lab. Problem where, yeah. Go ahead, <laughs> So I didn't try the yeah. yeah, I didn't try the lab, but I was just looking at the R Markdown document that I got from the website. So they have that chapter ten. That's the but I have not tried to run it. So okay. I just I was just looking at the codes. Yeah, it's really um helpful that they have the resources on the website and they have all of the R markdowns and then all the knitted R markdowns as HTML. So you can just load the HTML um, to see latest versions of things. And that's where they have the um, the torch version. So um, let's see, I'm trying to decide the best thing for us to do since Federica's having issues, but I guess, um, like Federica, so starting with, what did you do? Um, I, I have issue, issues with uh, uh, the, the, the packages. I don't know, my, my computer makes an error maybe because I've got old version both of R and uh, uh, the, the Mac because it, my Mac is a chapter. So, but I can uh, share the notes and you can maybe <laughs> go through the, the, the other things, I don't know. We'll see what we see. I think go ahead and do that. Yeah, can you see it? Yes, we can. All right. So la last week we um, just been through the, um, the theory. Okay, so we said, yeah. I didn't, honestly, I could not remember where we were. It's been a while since we've, like, uh, since we uh, met on the script. Ago. Yes, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> two, two weeks ago, yeah, two weeks ago. I don't know why I said the two weeks yeah. ago, yeah. So we went to, like, introducing what is the neural network. Uh, so the deeper learning, which is the neural network, uh, artificial neural network. So, and we, we saw what is the single layer neural network. Um, which is uh, made of uh, a model with an underneath model. Uh, so basically, th this is the function of the model. And then uh, here, where you usually have just the uh, coefficients, you have a footer model, which acts inside um, the, 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 the model function. Uh, the, 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 the main idea is to set this HK, um, H sub K function, which is the hidden layer function, the activation function. Uh, and you can choose between from uh, preset uh, um, functions. Um, and um, because neural network is usually done with, uh, um, uh, with phenomenon that you know uh, about, you, you know, a bit about the behavior of this phenomenon. So you said it's usually used for identify uh, the structure of a, a picture, a photo, uh, or identify text. Uh, so you're supposed to know what, what are you searching for, and then you set um, an underneath layer that will be selecting information that you provide. So this is a single layer because you have just uh, one function um, while, uh, um, and then um, uh, these are the other function that um, are the, 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 the main structure of the activation functions. So basically you have boxes inside the boxes inside the boxes. So for, let, let's do a simple, very, very simple example. You, you set this, uh, activation, uh, the, the main box of the activation function as a X squared, okay? Inside the X squared, you have uh, uh, the, another function. 
So that every, anything you put inside will be squared. Okay, so you can fix the structure outside and then the structure inside, and all will be uh, build it up, uh, building up your model function. Okay, so this is the the the, the basic. So a single layer is this one here. So you have just one in the layer. Uh, and all the, 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 the things is, um, you know, building up. I'm, I'm not repeating everything, <laughs> uh, but yeah. But anyway, uh, so um, for example, this is the first example, uh, or at least the beginning of the first example in the lab. Uh, where mm, so basically they they build it up uh, the model and then they found uh, um, the, uh, the the first uh, uh, mean absolute uh, value and then uh, they um, found the second value with the uh, the CV Klimnet a difference than before they did just with LM. And then they applied the, the neural network, okay? And say they, uh, to see if the neural network would work better. Um, so here is the, the procedure for, for installing Kira's uh, uh, and basically the difficulties I had personally is, uh, with uh, the Python part because of the version, different versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, yeah. like, uh, that's why Torch exists basically because Torch is written. It, it's a R plus a C library. There's no Python in the middle, and Keras uses Python in the middle, and it's a pain, and it's always awful to work with. So I am a big fan of the the new Torch. Uh, package, which is the other version of this lab. Um, so yes, I, I understand you having di installation difficulties because Keras, well, Car you know, Python can be painful to work with um, for installation. Yeah. I, I even tried. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that the, that no. would be experts, uh, but uh, I have even tried to run. Okay. Um, an example with Torch, uh, found on, on, on Torch website where the, the documentation are and everything. But I even, uh, I've been able to run that once, I've saved everything, so saw so the, the, the graphics and everything. And then when I attempted to do it twice, uh, didn't work anymore. So I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> Wait, so, so it worked the first time. But not the second yeah. time. No, it doesn't work anymore. Hmm. I don't know why. So the, the things I did it uh, just install the packages, load the packages, and then uh, there is an example I show you. Um, can you see my R? Yes. Uh, okay, I was here. Uh, there is. Um, was it ten torch dot r? Or there that, that that that's that that that's the lab. Yes. What's happening? You updated because something. I moved okay. Moved everything. Oh. Uh huh. Okay, so yeah, you um, go to get the Git tab. Yeah, I think you lost that file because you I don't know what happened. Um. <laughs> um, okay, so that's that's the torch. Okay. I think. Okay, so because I did it twice, so I put it even twice in the second. Things, yeah. So this is the lab, 
So as I said, they, they did the same thing twice uh, right. with LM and then Glimnet, cross-validation Glimnet, uh, and then with Torch, okay? So this is the, the, the way to, to do with Torch. You, you make a module, then you uh, initialize, it's a bit like um, uh, something to work, uh, to work on. You have a function to initialize and you have a function to get forward. And this is the first, the module, neural network module. Then um, suppose that you haven't done it, but if you did it before, you don't, you don't need to repeat it. Um, you set the values and the, these are just two ways, because, but we did it, so it's yeah. here. Would it be helpful <clears throat> if we walked through it, tried to run it and see where it was failing this time? Since you got it to work once, it seems likely it could work again. Okay, I, I'll try, but <laughs> it doesn't work. We'll see what happens. We might recognize the, the error and be able to help you fix it. Okay. This is, yeah. Uh, I go forward uh, yep. and say, okay, uh, I know what, what. Yeah, all this. All, all this. good. Okay. When you library torch. I do library torch. And there you go. Okay. It's installed then. Torch vision, torch data sets, and zero. And the seed. Okay. Okay. So now I do the module which is done. And the module, as you can see, uh, it's an object generator. Um, uh, there is this uh, initialize function and the forward. Right. Then you have the uh, outside layer and other classes. Then I already done this, so... Um, I shouldn't do that again. Sure. Let's go ahead and. Yeah. So now I set up the module that I've just done it with a, fu a loss function. The loss function is the underneath layer. So, yeah. yeah. And then an optimizer and set the metrics with the mean absolute error taken from the loose package and then set the other parameters set to the number of columns. So I can run that. Okay. okay. So far so good. So, and now I'm done. So I have the loose module generator and now I supposed to fit it. Yep. Okay. I fit. Okay. Oh, and then you get the R bomb. Huh. This is my issue. I'm sure about that. Hmm. So, <laughs> so I go back to where I was. What version of R do you have? Uh, 3.6. So the, the version is the R, R, R Studio. Uh, We've, uh, uh, have we run Torch on the server, Jonathan? No. I mean, okay. I'm not, not on the old one yeah we have okay. we've our new ones um, the new ones are you know 4.1 4.2 um yeah i haven't run it in 3.6 so it could be something but it should tell you that it did work once that's what i'm yeah know, stuck on here all right um well we can still we can look at the the rendered version online. Um, I can go ahead and share this. Sharing. Yeah. Uh, where are you there? Yeah. And, um, yes. So, God, I hate that it like rearranges things when I share. So I'm trying to fix that. All right, so in theory, you see my screen with lab deep learning at the top. Is that right? Everyone, that okay. is right. 
Okay, so this is the the torch version of the lab. Um, you know, it's some of the same stuff that we were just looking at. We can see that they did an LM and they do the um, uh, mean absolute error, and then they do a glimnet model and they see the mean absolute error. And I did find this interesting that um, like they didn't try to do any optimization on this because spoiler alert, the torch model doesn't do that well. Um, I just thought it was interesting that they use that as an example and then they didn't like they use it as a bad example. Um, that, but, you know, that raises an interesting question that it might be worth discussing because as far as I can tell, the book includes this chapter just for completeness. Yeah. Without I, really <laughs> uh, developing any, any ideas or doing strong motivation other than, oh, this stuff is also done and it can be really powerful. I, I totally agree. And that's why I, I never was able to go in and I wanted to do a version of this where I actually like show something useful <laughs> because it bothers me that it doesn't ever show, hey, sometimes deep learning works really well. And um, I do wonder a little bit if it's because this is written by and for statisticians and there is a little bit of a headbutting between like the deep learning side of the world and the you statistics to they side were of the aware world. this existed. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be fair, it can be hard in small yeah. top tutorials to find cases where it's that's that are not the the MNIST data set. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although they also do the MNIST data set in this. So um yeah, I don't know. I, I did find it really um kind of annoying that they didn't this and actually a little bit over in um seems like in uh, su supervised machine learning for text analysis with R, they don't necessarily do examples that work well there either. And it's like, you know, there are things that work really well in deep learning. And when you're writing chapters of books about it, you should, probably should choose examples that work, <laughs> um, that show why it's a thing. Um, so yeah, that was interesting to me. I agree. Um, so it's funny that I am much more familiar with Torch and Torch Vision than with Luz, which is, or Luz, which is the interface that makes Torch easier. Um, so we'll see how we do walking through this. So the, the kind of the family of packages, Torch is the thing that the RStudio team wrote to wrap the um, Torch C library. So again, it's going right down to um, running the, the the same thing that PyTorch runs, Torch for R runs. And so it's this kind of at, at that same level of just running the code directly. Um, things like Torch Vision, that's uh, taking all the, you know, the, the baseline that Torch supplies and they um, prepackage some of the vision um, uh, nets that have been built, like uh, pre-trained neural networks. And then Luz is a, a layer on top to make everything uh, a little bit easier to work with. Torch data sets obviously is just uh, data sets set up for Torch. Zealot, I thought it was interesting that they use Zealot. Zealot is a package that lets you like assign to lists. So you can put a list on the left side of a um, special assignment arrow. And it okay, will. That's, that's for Python people, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, and that is something uh, yeah, like there's still, we've worked with Torch and and we still have to put layers on top of it to make it feel more like R. Like it's still pretty Python-y. Um, if it's all R6, that's why, you know, when Federica showed the mod NN, it looks weird if you're not used to working with R6 objects. Um, but anyway, so okay, uh, we set a seed just to you know to make it consistent, and they set up this module with an initialize function. That's like what happens uh, when data comes in, and then forward is how the function that um, updates the model as it's uh, as it's training. Um, and then, yeah, again, they scale everything. They redo that step 
even though they do it above just to um, basically in case you jump down, I think, because they know some people reading this won't bother running the LM or the um, Glimnet. And so they show the full process. All right. And then they, they set up a setup. So this is, you know, a loss function of uh, they're just using mean square square error as um, what they're measuring in order to update. And just to be clear, this setup is a loose function, right? Loose yes. colon colon setup. Yes. I wish, I wish people get in the habit of these tutorials like <laughs> doing spacing. that. So you know which package each thing comes from. Yeah, every function except for deployer descent. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, namespacing is, I, 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 in tutorials, I really do like namespacing of functions so you know what they're coming from. Um, oh, well. Um, but yeah, so this setup is from Luz, um, and I really should learn to pronounce that right. It is the it's Portuguese for for light um, because the main developer of uh, Torch for R is from Portugal. Actually, also the main developer of Torch Vision is from, I mean not from Portugal from Brazil. Anyway, all right. So we set up our loss function, set up the optimizer, um, which is. Do you have any thoughts on uh, like a description of what that means, Jonathan? The optimizer? Yeah. It's the, okay. So <laughs> what the, the loss, the back, back step, the loss is the thing you're trying to minimize. So you think of it as like, um, if you picture like some surface in high dimensions, you're trying to find the minimum point and the optimizer is basically the, the algorithm that gets you there so right. so what you know when you when you're doing your minimization so in neural networks you do this thing called back propagation to get gradients so if you're imagine you're a bug walking around in a surface what the what neural networks generally do for you the back propagation is tell you what the gradient is at where you are but you still have to know well how do i use that gradient to decide how to take a step and so the optimizer is the algorithm that says how do I decide what step to take next to try to find the minimum point, the minimal loss here? So in, in general terms, that's the optimizer is. It's the rules for trying to minimize the loss. The rules we're going to follow. That's a, that was a good way to put it. Do you have intuition for which things in the setup would be called? Like, you know, this, you actually call the function. And here you just specify the function because you're calling this, but it's also, and, oh, it's right, returning yeah. a function, right? Okay. So I've never used loose before. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm yeah, not familiar enough. enough with what <laughs> is taking its arguments. Other places, you know, you specify the loss as like the name of the function, kind of like the optimizer. So it is, it is weird to me. Yeah. That one's being called. Do we have, can we F1 set up for a minute? Uh, I don't have this have loaded okay. locally and i don't have loose loaded anyway, um, so. So, All right. uh, yeah uh i'll, I'll try on, to me, get there the next me, time you're discussing something here. okay and then msc loss that's a torch function i think yeah so we'll torch. like i don't know that mm -hmm. one thing about these is they are still actively in development um yeah there are things. There are little things like this that sometimes they still um, update of. Oh, that's so. A here's here's something that's good to know about Torch in general. A lot of the functions in Torch they'll come in two varieties, and you need to distinguish them. There's the NN version and NNF version, and the F and NNF means function. That's um, okay. Let me find you guys again. Okay. <laughs> So I, I can't, I don't understand this perfectly enough to give you a complete explanation, but the NN versions of things, like you might think of them more as factories. I'm not sure that's completely correct. So don't take that to the bank. <laughs> and F is the actual function. So I, I suspect here that if you took, took the NN MSC loss call out and replace that with NNF MSC loss, you could take out those parentheses and just pass it in as is, if that makes sense. So the NN versions might return the function. The NNF versions are functions. Interesting. OK. That's, that's an oversimplification of it. OK. But 
I think that's the difference right there in that set, call to setup, why the NN thing is being called as a function, because it's NN rather than NNF. Got it. All right. Oh, darn it. I just downloaded the Keras version to try to run. Let's download the, uh, the Torch version. So I want to try to get this set up um, so that we can discuss there. Ooh. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's a that's a little little odd. And then they lose lose uh, provides metric sets. Uh, mean absolute error is what it's doing here. So it's using that as how it um, evaluates how it's doing. And then the last piece in this block is um, you know in a neural network you picture all the like circles with arrows going to more circles, that input layer of circles, you need to say how many circles are there. So that, that, that's accurate, right, John, Jonathan? That's it a good way like to it. describe that. Um, yeah, and so what it's saying is uh, it's in, the input has however many columns, use those as the size of those inputs, of how many circles you're starting with in this model. Um, can you scroll up just a little bit so I can see where how up, mod NN was defined before? Yeah. Um, so somehow that must know how to talk to the initialized input size. So, yeah. So it's saying set HRAMs there it is. Yeah, input size. Input size. So yeah. So this is a function of input size. It uses that value to decide how how big to make the um, the first hidden layer. It's interesting calling that a hyperparameter, but I mean, I think that's, it's just saying whatever you pass. So the, the initialized function there, we could have any inputs to that, right? Input right. size, they just happen to decide we want input size to be a parameter to initialize. But there could be other hyperparameters there. Like any of these numbers. Like, could yeah, be... like, for, yeah, that, those would be better hyperparameters. Like what's the dropout percentage? Right. That'd make more sense as a hyperparameter, but they're they're hard coding those in and passing input size as a as a variable. So yeah. So back down in setup, when you're saying set the hyperparameters to this, you you know that's where you could actually set hyperparameters like the dropout if you set up your initialize to take those in as hyperparameters. Right. Okay. Um. I have a question. Sure. So at this point, at this point here. So let's say that so the setup works and everything, then you fit it. What does it change if I don't use this list instead? Because you have a different option to put inside the fit, no? You can use fit lists or um, other type of um, uh, of class of that da of the of data, no. So the list is the the simplest one to use uh, in this case. So down in down in the fitted um, box yeah. you're talking about there. Yeah. Oh. Inside the fit with uh, you you can use different type of um, uh, of class uh, of that class of data, uh, except data frames. So you cannot use a data frame. You can use a list. So I've use... never worked with loose here. And what I can, what I'm gathering just from looking at this is that it does a lot of magic under the hood when you pass in the data for fitting to turn that into the right format for the model to- But, but to what, is, what is this loose? Uh, why it gets into the meaning of fitting torch? I mean, what you want to do when you're fitting is you you have your data for training and in, in torch that needs to be in the form of a torch tensor if you get down to the nuts and bolts and you pass something into the model. And it looks like what Loose is doing is it's taking data in some other format and doing all the wrappers to set up the data loader, set up the 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 objects to turn put your data in the right form and it's the point of loose is to kind of abstract away all that messiness so you don't have to think about 
what format your data is in, it looks like, or at least you don't have to do all that, that yeah. yourself. And I, I don't, I don't know like what else, what all it's doing there. That's just my, that's what I'm gathering from looking at that call. Yeah. Uh, it's, it is um, surprising to me that, you know, this is in the version that's all abstracted away and you still like, that's not a nice clean and easy format. It's actually cleaner in, uh, where'd it go? Um, in the, uh, Keras version. So that's interesting to me. Yeah, the... because here it, that, that's different. It's a different fit. So you use fit is different uh, when you use it. Um... Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying this is so the Keras. Yeah. The Keras. What are X this... and Y here, John? Are they what? What are the uh, um, here? Kind of objects are they? They're they matrix. so X model, is a matrix. Model, model matrix. And then Y was somewhere up above. Uh, it's the just a uh, vector. Okay. The um, model dot matrix. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's the. This is just the scale of the values, so it makes the, the, the values right. all comparable, comparable within each other, so just scaling to the center and not, nothing else. Um, so this is just, but uh, um, this is still class matrix, so I, I think, uh, um, but then um, there is a requirement for this fit function to be able to use it with data that are class list um, and matrix. And if, if you do like question mark fit and with loose fit, it leads you to the, the fit from, from the, um, the other package uh, because it's uh, using the uh, the other fit, but as a requirement for using just this type of class of data. So, yeah. Um, this is it's it's funny. Like, We've, it's a double edged so, sword to have these, yeah. these like tighten, you know, nice abstract wrappers. wrappers. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ones we've always worked with, we actually have to, we have done the um, torch data loader where we actually do all the steps of setting you up. So we, it's less abstracted and we understand what's going on there. Um, here, it can take the data loader. That's what I pasted into the chat. Uh, um, but it can also take a, a data set, um, which I'm not sure what data sets to find. Oh, the torch data set, um, or just a list like they're showing here. Um, data loader, the data loader. So you you that, that's something that uh, uh, in the example, for example, in uh, can can you see the file I've just uh, loaded in the chat? The R markdown. Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't know if you can open it in your in your R. There you uh, can uh, see the the example that I've run uh, with last. I found found it in the in the documentation. So oh. it takes a while uh, to run it because the quite a certain number of uh, replications. <laughs> but there the, the data set, so the fit, the, the data set inside the fit is different and it works. Gotcha, interesting. Um... So that's why I was trying to understand uh, if we can change this in any manner, any way to, to make it like more. If that's what's crashing it for some reason. Yeah. So this is all, this is the baseball's data, right? Baseball data, is, it's not, it's not that big, is it? No. Um, huh. Uh, it'll be just a second. I'm uh, processing some things. Uh, apparently after I did some updating, I didn't uh, reinstall Torch. And so it is almost done installing, there it goes, the C, the Torch C library. Because that is something that's 
it's both nice and some people are a little annoyed by it. I find it really nice that when you library torch the first time, if you don't have the torch C libraries installed, it installs them. And it just like, you know, when you're coming from working with Keras, where Keras, you have to like go through so many hoops to get it to set up. Torch, when you library it, it just sets itself up. Um, and I'm trying to pause or stall a little bit because it's not quite done installing. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting that the the more complex in my mind model uh, works fine for you. I guess maybe MNIST isn't that big. Um, anyway, I'm gonna continue through this while things load and then we'll look at that, uh, the other model in a moment. Um, so let's see, where were we? So we, okay, the data is in a weird format. That's interesting. The validation data is in the same format, uh, which is the same, they're actually using the same data for validation. It's interesting. Um, I think no, the one, one is uh, without testing. So one is training set and the other one is testing it. So see that there, there is- Okay, minus gotcha, here. gotcha, yep. Yep, yep, okay. Okay, let's see. So I think you you still see that window, right? The, um, this, the, yeah. that I'm moving right now. Okay, because I, then yes. I'll have to yes. reshare to get our uh, new share. I'll just do the screen. I think everything's fine there, okay. Okay. Um, and so this, I just downloaded the their version of the um, the lab, and here is the file that um, Federica shared. I'm gonna start here. So I, I've run all the steps down through here, library everything. We can set up the the neural net. Yada yada yada. We can re run these, even though they've already been run. Um, and I did want to see, yeah, uh, like 263 rows, like, why is it crashing your system? I don't understand. And, and by the way, like, that's why this doesn't work probably is 263 rows is a very, very small neural net. Um, I'm not surprised that they're not able to train anything very well here, but whatever. Um, did I run? No, so, okay. Set up, or we'll run the setup like we were saying. Um, and if we look at that, that is, yeah, it's creating a new, okay. Um, it's creating this function. So if you look at what this actually returns, uh, it's a oops um a loss module it's basically it's a function i think um it's a it's an r6 no there we go see it's a function and a special kind of function um so that's what's happening there the metrics are a metric function we set up our parameters with that input like we were talking about. And then let's see if I can fit it. So here goes nothing. Okay. It was gonna run through 20 epochs. Um, and even fast, so you did it. Fast. Yeah, like I said, it's not that much data. It's weird to me that it crashed your computer and is consistently it, crashing your computer. Yeah, no, it's a version. There, there is a, pro, uh, it's a, it's a, it's gotta be issues. something isn't installed, right? I would try uninstall uh, Torch and reinstall and see if that does anything. Um, Cause something's, although the other one works. So I don't know, that's weird. Um, anyway, so yeah, we, you know, they, they run their training. What are we looking at <clears throat> over the different epochs? <laughs> um yeah it is interesting because they you know they said they just did it for 20 to um to show like 
I guess it started to get like maybe um, validation started to go back up in the um, mean absolute error. It's interesting to me that the so the validate oh validation and the training set are like effectively identical output, <laughs> like, um, and so you haven't gotten into anything. Uh, you're def you're not overfitting, so that's nice. All right, and then when we do this, we look at our um, mean absolute error, and it's higher. The other two were like two fifty something like that. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's that neural network, and now then we do MNIST, and this is <laughs> there. I have heard people complaining about. Um, oh, we need to update those, update those functions. But anyway, um, everything uses MNIST in the demos. Uh, oh, it was Roger Pang on the um, Not So Standard Deviations podcast. Was he's trying to learn um, some image processing, deep learning stuff. And you know he's been teaching uh, machine learning for many years, but he's never done deep learning. And he said all the tutorials are okay. Fit this model using MNIST, and now go do your own thing. And oh, your own thing will be nothing like MNIST because MNIST is this really refined data set, and it's been you know it's perfect, and every it's been used for a million demos, and everything's tuned to it, and it won't work for your own data set. And he's was complaining kind of rightfully of. I like I don't know the steps in between there. <laughs> like, how do I make mine work? Um, and it was really interesting because uh, I would not train an image classifier from scratch. I would use one of the pre-trained things and then fine tune it. And he hasn't gotten to the point yet of knowing to do that. Um, it's been just interesting to hear his journey. So, okay, we've got, um, 60,000, let's see, so this is a, oops, what is, oh, oh, these are um, our six data sets. Again, this is uh, from uh, this, uh, from Torch Vision specifically, and these are data sets that are pre-set up to work with Torch. Um, 60,000 images in training and 10,000 images in testing, so cool. Um, and they're they're going to set up a transformation on on them, where they flatten them. And I don't know what torch div does. Um, divides each element uh, into two hundred uh, others. Yeah, so it's dividing it into two hundred fifty five channels, I guess, basically to a, a 255 um, uh, pixel input, I think. Um, and then so that you use that to set up your training or to adapt the training and testing. I'm a little confused why they, did they start from, no, so I don't know. Um, okay, so yeah, we're gonna just apply these transformations um, to, to make these vectors. All right, so now they're ready to fit. We set up another neural network. Again, this initialization, they're not giving it any parameters, any hyperparameters to tune. They're just gonna preset it the way they want it to work. All hard-coded, yeah. Yeah, but like we said, you know, you could put like in features as an argument and I mean, this isn't really what you would do, but something like that um, when you're setting these things up. You're more likely like the dropout percentage. Yeah, like that. yeah. So yeah, you could say um, dropout P and then that. And so then when you initialize it, and, and I guess it would be dropout P1. Um, so when you initialize it, you can send those things in, but whatever, we're gonna work with what they've got. And we're going to take a look at that neural net. And it is, uh, OK, so this is getting into where maybe we have some success. I think they don't compare this one to anything. So it's hard to say if we have any success. Um, but it's a much bigger neural net. It's doing some more complicated things. And we set up that, do that setup. We're saying cross entropy loss. 
um, using this RMS prop uh, optimizer again, and we're using accuracy as our um, metric. Um, and then we're going to time it to see how long it takes. And then we'll plot it. So um, it's interesting because since they wrapped that in there, I think we're hiding the nice print output so we don't get to see what it's doing. I don't, hmm. I'm not sure why that is there. Um, okay, so it's going to take a, yeah, at least a couple of minutes, probably. Um, I'm not sure that my GPU is set up to work right now, so we'll see what happens. So it doesn't doesn't have the nice. Uh, no, they suppressed here. it. I don't know why they suppressed it. Um, Wait, so is it verbose equals false is the thing. If you turn that to true. You know, it, yeah, it would have shown it. Um, you, want, you want to cancel it and turn that to true and see? Yeah, let's not worry about some costs. So, all right. Um, yeah. It just feels like, more help and nice to see it go. It, hey. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. Um, we can see it is trying to fit. The accuracy is jumping all over the place. And, oh, well, actually going up that's nice uh loss is going down um this epoch and so each epoch is taking or epic depending on how you want to pronounce it it's taking like 30 seconds something like that that's going to take a little while but um it's still only uh like 188 examples per uh epoch um which okay yeah we can talk that about many this a little batches bit. Oh. at least do we have a lot of oh there's a lot of um examples in each batch though because it's a, right it's so the batch is 256 right. so that means it's looking at 256 um rows at a time and it does 188 batches of 256 rows yeah. um and we can see yeah the accuracy is getting really high because um mnist i mean it's a good data set uh so MNIST, you know, we I don't know. <laughs> Anything uh, if, less than high 90s, though, is embarrassingly low. So <laughs> for, for MNIST, that's true. Um, MNIST is a, a collection of um, handwritten digits, if you haven't seen these this data set before. And the task that you're trying to learn is, given a handwritten digit, can I classify it as what digit it actually is. I think that one came from the post office. Is that right? Yeah. Or, yeah, that the post office has actually been doing like image rec recognition research since the 70s or 80s. Um, and because, you know, now they automatically sort mail. Um, and so they want to be able to recognize handwriting. Um, and they've been doing it like they, I, I, they're a good uh, like win um, example that what they would do is that they would sort things that the sorter was certain about what the, the value is and hold out everything else for human sorting. And when they started doing that, the sorter could do like 1% of mail or less, but that was still better because there's a lot of mail going through the U S post office every day. So, um, and they started doing that in, sometime in the eighties. All right. So we're on four or five, getting it's close. A couple things you might want to point out. It, if you're looking closely, you might be confused at how your uh, validation accuracy is higher than the training accuracy. And I think there's two reasons for that. Uh, one is these are averages over like that epoch. And, right. and so like you train for an epoch and it, the accuracy goes up a bit and then the validation, you know, is, this after that, but that wouldn't explain how the train the average training for epoch two is worse than the validation for epoch one. Right. But that's because of dropout, I'm pretty sure. So when you're training, dropout means like you are randomly zeroing out a lot of the connections in your network. And in this case, it was like, you know, 30 or 40 percent or something like that, if I remember those parameters. And so you're like intentionally handicapping your model while you're training it. And that's to avoid the model relying 
too much in any particular set of connections. So it forces it to, to be more agile and diverse. Kind of. it, but when you do the validation, you don't do that dropout zeroing out. So it's like you bring your whole, everything the model has learned. And so you can get actually better accuracy. All right. And why did the plot not show up? Um, all right. So this is accuracy. And again, you know, like he was saying, it, it uh, is going up for validation. Loss goes down a lot in that first epoch, and then it slowly is reducing a little more. Um, we never get to the point where validation is starting to come back up, which is a, a sign. Like val when validation starts to either the accuracy falls off or the loss goes up, it's a sign that you're getting into overfitting. Um, so they never they never do get there in this particular example. Um, and uh, oh, what are we doing? Oh, because <laughs> so it's automatically um, using my GPU and. Apparently, on the box that they were building this on, they didn't have a GPU. And so there's a step that it has to do that it didn't do. And I'm not sure where I have to do that. Uh, uh, there's, there should be some easy predict method to charge to mag. convert to it's GPU. Right there. Um, I don't know how this would go and lose. <laughs> uh, I know how to do it. Like, um, hold on. So let's do, yeah. Okay, so if let's just did, stop it at this this point. So, um, working, whatever. Does working have methods on it? Working dollar sign? Or, yeah, that's what I meant. Dollar sign. Um, CPU? Is it just CPU or is it like two? Uh, just CPU, I think. CPU, okay. and it's a function. Is it a function? So if you do that, um, yeah, then so, just pass that into the rest of it. Right. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, so that was all the output uh, is is actually using my GPU, and I'm surprised actually that the lose version doesn't just deal with that automatic. It it dealt with it automatically going into the GPU. It doesn't deal with it automatically coming out. Um, anyway, uh, and so yeah, we got up into the 95% accuracy again. Like Jonathan said, that's I mean it's it's good, but it's not that hard to get that good of with GlimNet. So. Um, and I think they are going to do. Um, I mean, ninety-five yeah. percent is this is like it's on not a bad. basis. So if you're thinking about like trying to read just a zip code, take ninety-five and raise it to the power of seven, and you'll see kind of what your yeah your practical accuracy is. Not not so hot. Yeah. Okay. This one's going to take a while. So um, they're just going to do another one with. Uh, let's see. What are we doing different here? Um, Oh, and then build the, well, I don't know. I don't know what we're building here. It's been too long since I've looked at this at all. But so we're building a another um, smaller, simpler model. Um, it's just linear, okay. I don't, I don't wanna let this train all the way because it's gonna take uh, another couple of minutes to go through so i'm going to stop that all right um let's see oh and that we are at 10 um does anyone have i don't know right, any have thoughts thing to jump to, so. yeah oh actually i do have to run to a meeting so um yeah that's that uh we could do this 
forever, but I think we need to move on to 11. Um, I'm probably going to like join in to this same lab in some in more um, cohorts because I want to see where else we can get. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry, we do have to run to another meeting. So uh, we can discuss more in the channel if you have any questions. Um, all right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.